Welcome back. I'm Pete, and you're watching the Custom Guard Channel. But we're gonna work out a Bobcat today. And it's gonna be awesome. Since this one's the Silverado, maybe you guys can just call me the, the Silverado Man. Hey guys, uh, it's it's Christmas Eve today, and you know I'm I'm just here, and, and I'm happy and everything, and I'm more than happy just to be here talking to you guys and making a little video for tonight, and I hope it's going to be a quick one. But anyways, today working on the Infinity, I had to use the new soldering iron that I bought, and I just I thought, well, I can we're going to make this the unboxing video, even though I already unboxed it. I'll include some of that footage, but yeah, I want to set it up so I could use it for mobile use. And I think that's what we're going to do right now, so we're going to make some cables, and I'll put the other footage in here from when we actually unboxed it. I did get a new soldering iron on, on Amazon, and we're going to try it out. But it's 19 volts. I figure I could just wire this into a, one of my Craftsman batteries and use it on the go. So, yeah, I'm not sure. It comes with a power supply. What does it say? Output is 19 volts. 3.4 amps. Did I say I got that on eBay? I'm at Amazon. So, all right, we got an unboxing on this video also, huh? I'll put the link down in the description when I publish this video. Uh, I just bought it. It's kind of cheap. I do a lot of soldering. So, yeah, it's a... I don't know how to say that. It's a the part number SQ-001 electric solder and iron. Square? Square. It must be square. I don't know. But we got some we got some stuff in here. A little Allen wrench, some little screws, a cable. This thing it says right on it 12 to 24 volts. So this will work perfect on the road. So it looks like this just. Well, there's a little Phillips. Yeah, so, you, so we want to make sure that's all the way in and give that a little tighten. And what do we got here? Here's a, a little, um, yeah, we better open all this stuff. So here's a little um, holding tray. They never work very good. Some decals, an instruction manual. We might need to use that instruction manual. This must be a 12 volt. This must be the 12 volt adapter for your car. But they didn't send. They didn't send the other end for this. Is it marked positive or negative? Does it matter? Sometimes it matters. Yep. So the negative is the one on the on the end with the not flat. So that's cool. We can use this in our truck on a service call. 
So yeah, it's right over here. And this thing is the coolest little thing. So I got I got some stuff already set up. And maybe I'll I'll just walk closer to the camera when it's time, but this thing is pretty sweet and I did figure out what the little Allen wrench for. These are not Phillips. They're this little Allen wrench I had. And there's a couple extra screws, so don't lose those extra screws. I don't know what they're for. We'll just put them back in there. I think it's probably for this. So they're a good soldering iron, like working on delicate circuit boards. And I've repaired some scopes before and stuff like that. So you might have to ground this because there could be some stray electricity and you don't want to blow stuff out when you're working on it. A sensitive piece of equipment so I think that's what this is for this little screw anyways it comes with a power adapter and it's 12 to 24 volts and the adapters 19 but you can just plug that in here and I think this thing is I don't know how you say that but I'm gonna say it as a square and then the models SQ-001 and it's electronic siren iron iron mini intelligent it's mini intelligent but anyways, you can plug it in, and that's not actually on right now, but the display is lit up, and that's pretty cool. Like, I don't know. So to actually turn it on, we just hold the A down, long press it, and then to turn the temperature up and down is like down here, down here, short presses. So right now, this is just reading room temperature. But anyways, I want to make this so I can use it all on the road when I go on service calls and a lot of times, some of the places I go, I need a soldering iron. I mean, a lot of the times, on certain, I fix like magnet controllers and all kinds of stuff. So, but I figured I, I always bring my NOCO in case somebody uh, needs a jump. So I figured we're going to make an adapter for the NOCO. We can move that over here now. Yeah, and it comes with this cable, which is a 12 volt cable. But I'm having, I'm having trouble, like locating or sourcing out the other end of this. Like, maybe you guys could tell me what I need. Anyways, we're going to make something. So, I, I got I got a whole bunch of stuff. I save everything. So, I found this. And I think we can shave this down to fit in there. So, I think maybe we'll do that first. So, the first thing we need to do is find out the orientation. And this is marked. So, I might get a couple markers out here. We're going to need them. Black and red. So the first thing we probably want to do is figure out which one of these is actually positive. Because this is actually marked. I'm going to have to get my magnifying glass. It's not my eyes are bad. I'm just on the computer and phone all day long. And I think that's if ruining my eyes, to be honest with you. So the positive is there. So now, and this is my little... Innovava meter or whatever, I don't know. This is my go-to meter, and I've had this for like 20 years probably. Or I don't know since they made them. It never dies. I think I've only put batteries in it one time. Probably not 20 years. Let's let's say let's say 17. I don't even know. It's a long time. And I'm just going to put it on the buzzer. So now, we know which one is positive on here, but we don't on here. So I'm just going to assume it's this one. And it's not. So the positive is the one that has the stripe on it. So we need to know that. So I'm going to put a little red on that stripe. I hope today is not a droppy day too. I think the other day when I was working on Infinity on the intake, doing the valve cover gaskets, I was dropping stuff all the time. So this don't quite fit in there. But I think with a file... We'll just file a little bit, and it'll fit right in. Oh, this file feels pretty good. So a little bit there, and then... Then we need this corner gone a little bit.
flip it like this. And is this corner gone? Now I think, you know, file it. it doesn't fit in there right right now. So I'm like, we can just do all this on video. That's what I do, I make things. I'll file this in a little bit. One thing, if you save a lot of stuff, you have to save it for a reason. I think we already filed this in. So save anything I save. If I save it, I, I got a reason. And I plan to use it someday. We gotta be getting close. And the little notch here is actually going to line up. It doesn't quite fit in there yet, though. And the terminals might be too big. Gosh, I don't know. I think we should try to force it. It appears to be this side. Maybe we need to bring that out or something. And it's raining out. It's like 50 some degrees out. I don't, I don't remember ever being that warm out in December. Maybe we could just read that out. Alright, so that, that cut that rubber like butter. I'm not giving up on it yet. It's just something with that one terminal. I can't decide what's going on yet. Here's this little punch I had out the other day. You know, I really want to make this work. Like, I could bring this in the truck and do some work in there. Because when it's cold out, I'll just bring this stuff in the truck if I can and work on it inside the truck. But I don't want to ruin this piece because this side because eventually I find an adapter. I just think it needs to be spread out just a little bit. All right, it went on now. Let's see if we're making a connection. So, the meter's still on. So the outside should be outside. Inside. Yep. So, alright, we made one adapter. I don't know if I can, if we're going to be able to test this adapter. Plus, what is that? How many feet? And my cord is all tangled up. Well, we'll untangle that later. You know what we could do to test this? I know what we can do. I'll go get a couple jumper wires and we'll hook it up to the NOCO just to verify that that works because that's going to be pretty cool if it does. Alright, let's get this thing hooked up to the NOCO. So I'll just power on the NOCO and then to get it to output power 
we gotta press this exclamation point and hold it down and then it turns on and we got, got my jumper leads that I bought with my anag meter and that's in the description below I think the jumper leads are worth as much as I paid for the meter they're, they're like this end screw on so yeah, we probably should plug it in. I got a little bit of stuff here I should clean up. So that that does plug into there. So it is working. Hopefully that stays on there. So let's uh let's turn it on. I'll hit a long press it. And I think I got it set for 300, yo. Yeah. So it's warming up. This thing doesn't take long to warm up. But normally we're running off 19 volts, and now we're on 12. 12.0, yo. Yeah. So I usually have my tip set around uh, 300 Celsius. Whatever. So we're at 300 right now. Yeah. I like that. Alright, so this is going to be my adapter for, um, then we just long press it to turn it back off. And it says stop right on it. Okay. I don't know how that's supposed to work. figure it out maybe not today so this is going to be my adapter let's take this off here let's shut this note go off get these jumper wires off here so that's really cool oh that's like an eight foot adapter we just made so this is going to be adapter you know it's 12 volts I can go outside the door and weld or solder outside the door and weld. Oh, it is welding, I suppose. But I could solder inside the truck. Or, I don't know, a lot of jump packs have a cigarette lighter on them. So, that's cool. It's really cool. I'll tidy this up. And it doesn't come with a case or anything. I don't know. So, I suppose it will clean some of this up now. Because now we're going to use this to do some soldering. Put the noco back here for now. We're, we need this. And these are even my original test leads. So now I want to make an adapter for the noco. So I found a couple of these. I saved all my AC adapters. I never throw them away unless they're junk. I even cut the cords off a couple and I still save them. So I got one of these will plug into the soldering iron and one of these will plug into the NOCO. So we do have to figure out though which wire is which. So the inside is our positive. I'm just going to try to probe these. this one Let, let's just strip the positives first I gotta be careful with this one I got this one set up for some really small wires there we go so that's this one let's find the positive on this one so it's this one let's strip that, that back we know them are the positives got it. First try on that one. Okay, so next we want to slide a piece of heat shrink. We're going to need three pieces, I think. So we want to get a piece to go over the whole thing. Maybe that'll be this piece. And then we want two smaller pieces. 
is to slide over the wires that we solder and I'm going to cut them like three quarters of an inch. This heat shrink does not have the glue inside. I got it from Harbor for eight. But you can't win every time, can you? So first thing we'll do is we'll slide the bigger piece over. Then we'll slide a small piece. Now we should be ready to solder the positives together. I made this thing too. I seen one on a video. And you know, I was bored at work one day, and we had a full machine shop, so I just made one. It's just heavy, and it can hold stuff. I'm going to put that wire in here. I'm going to clamp it back together. There we go. Maybe I'll move it down. I don't know, I was watching a video, somebody was using one. We're going to plug this into the to the regular adapter, which is this one. And we're going to turn it on. Then we're going to tin these wires. So we got this one to tin to. Oh, I just like making things. And I'll show you something else that we're going to try here in a minute. That's already up to 300. That's 10. That's 10. So we'll just put a little extra on our tip. And we're going to hold these together. That one's soldered. I'm just gonna. I think 300 is a little hot for right now. Let's let's turn it down. Turn it. It looks like 50 degree increments. I'm not sure that works the best. Yeah, did I tell you the Allen wrenches for these things? And then this whole tip. It's not replaceable or anything, but this whole thing pulls out. It's in the other video. We'll just set that up there. We might as well finish this one up. Let's heat shrink this. Yeah. Use a little torch I got from Menards. Probably best to use a heat gun. Alright, that's now we can do the negatives. Give them a little twist. It doesn't matter. And then we'll, um, we'll just clamp this so it's more stable. I thought this thing was pretty cool. I've seen the guy use he. I don't know if he made his own or if you can buy these. But I've made my own. Don't forget to slide your little piece of heat shrink on there. Now we'll tin them wires. So maybe maybe 250 is not hot enough. That seems to melt solder. It's right on the edge of being hot enough. That's it's hot enough. Yep, we got that all tinned. Get them close together. This could be a problem. I'm going to turn it up a little higher. 300. I just don't want to burn my tip and it's already turning a little black. So I'm going to put a little more solder on there. Okay, that's going to work. Kind of get it to where I need to be. Kind 
Uh, it kind of looks like it might be good. Let me just check it. Yeah, I think we got it soldered. Slide that heat shrink over it. Okay, now we'll take the other piece that we put on there. Go right over the top of these. That's about the best I could do for soldering a couple cords together. Alright, there we go. So now I'll go ahead, I'll put this in stop. It's called stop when you're not working. Now it's going to cool down. So it probably takes a minute. We'll just let it cool down. Let's hang it up there. Guys, yeah, I saw. I just cleaned up a little bit and uh, yeah, we're on the NOCO power cord. And the NOCO can up up USB or 12 volts right here. It takes a little barrel connector. I don't know what size barrel connectors these are. So, we'll, and to make this have power, you got to have the NOCO on. Just on. So, I think I'll grab my, my test light that I bought on Amazon. So, watch this. I'm going to pull this one out. I'm going to pull this one out. And then my jumper leads with the ANAG meter come up these these screw in this is these are these jumper leads are like my go-to now i just i use them all the time so we're going to plug that into the test light and we still have jumper leads on the other end which i'm probably going to have to put a probe on this end so i'm going to grab the probe And we'll see if we got power here. And we do. Do you see that? I suppose we should check the polarity. Let me get my meter. We should make sure that this is the correct polarity because I don't want to burn out my new... um soldering iron. So I'll put it on DC. The outside is going to be negative. The inside is going to be positive. We're correct. Alright, let's plug it in and see if she could warm up and melt some solder. And I'll say goodbye to you guys. Oh yeah, it's power. Or it's got power. Let's turn it on. Alright, she's warming up. This thing warms up really fast. I've used a lot of soldering iron. Sometimes you got to wait a while. This one warms up. I mean, I'm just going to say it's pretty decent. You got to wait a little bit, but you always do. So as soon as she gets around 300, yeah, 250 is enough. Is it going to get to 300? Oh, I have it set on 250. Let's go up a little bit. And there we go. It's going to go to 300 now, but... I'm sure it's hot. Yeah, it's hot. Yeah, there's that 300. I don't know what the min and max is. I don't care. I just solder wires. And it, and it seems to remember. And now I'm too close. So it does seem to remember the last temperature set, setting that I had set at. Which ain't a big deal, but that's pretty cool. I, I don't know if there's a way to switch this to Fahrenheit. Because I like Fahrenheit. I don't I don't like Celsius at all. I, I think they should uh, throw it away. But yeah, so now... And this will be a fairly long cord. I'm sure it's going to be over 8 feet. So now we can do soldering with the NOCO. Or in a cigarette lighter. That's this one we just made. Or... It comes with the, this AC adapter that plugs right in to the wall. Yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm just messing around. So yeah, this thing is really cool. I'm going to turn it off. It's in stop mode. It came with this little thing. I think we could set that right here. I'll go ahead and turn the NOCO off. 
So there, I finally figured out how to use it, and uh, yeah, this thing is really cool. Glad I bought it. It doesn't cost very much. I'm not supposed to let you guys know the prices, because it, it's something with Amazon, because prices change with inflation, and some people are greedy, and... Mm. But we're not greedy around here. We just like to fix cars. And to fix some of the things I fix, this is going to be handier. Oh, I know what I wanted to... Yeah, I wanted to check and see if it works with my little um, memory saver. I built a memory saver. Let's clean up some of this, and I think we'll use this same cord. So I'll put the NOCO back to where it goes. And I just keep it over here. But I built... I built this little memory saver with these batteries, and I... If my drill batteries go bad, I take the, the battery apart and save all these little cells, and they're like 3.7 volts. So this is not quite 12 volts, I don't think. And I've only charged it once. But, so I made it so you could plug it into a cigarette lighter. There's a little, I put a little jack in there. So, like, some cars you can use a cigarette lighter. Also, this is like so when you change the battery or unhook the battery, they don't lose all the ma the radio stations. And I also made it so it works with, uh, you just plug it into your OBD2 socket. It works really good. You don't need very much power. But I was just wondering if this battery pack would work. So she's, she's, she turned on. Let's put it in work mode. So long press the A. We're in work mode. Let's see if this baby warms up. You know, if that works off this little little pack I got, that'll be pretty cool. And I don't even think that's all. I use it all the time and never charge it. So it's probably not even charged. So yeah, we're warming up. And I can just hold all this up here. And it's up to 232 and rising. So we'll just see if it gets up to 300. So this is the coolest little solder gun I ever solder iron I've ever bought. And here we're at 300. Sure enough, now we can really do mobile soldering. And and this stuff I got on eBay because I wasn't in Amazon then, and I built this all myself. I still need to make a little cover for the back because it's kind of open. As long as you don't set it on nothing metal, you're fine. Yeah, this is going to work out great, so now I got this, so like if I want to go inside your car and slot or something, and I could, I could even, I even use these things to weld like bumpers and plastic pieces. Yeah, I do all kinds of weird stuff. Yeah, so, so I got that working. And you know, a nice one of these to save memory on, on the car. The customer is always happy when they, the radio stations are, aren't missing and... He's setting their clock. So you gotta have something like this and I just I just made this myself. And it's I think it's only at eleven something volts, so it's not gonna damage anything in the car's uh computer. You know, if it does if it if the cigarette lighter or the OBD two connection is drawing too much juice, well big deal, we tried. So we got to check out a whole bunch of homemade tools that I've made. I'm gonna shut this off. But I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put this in my recommended things. I've, I've used it. We used it today, twice, and all this time we've used it here. I really like this thing. It's going to be my go-to from now on. I just hate to say it, this thing's pretty sweet. So yeah, I, I like to make things and that's what I do. And I like to fix cars. I do that too. Anyways. I hope I can get this video published and I hope it can be less than 15 minutes and you guys can see one of my products I recommend for Amazon. So I put anything that I've had a video on, I put down on the bottom. And then, you know, if you click on that link, I make a little bit of money and, and you get to see a tool or get to buy a tool that I reviewed and you kind of know what a little bit of what it's about. I won't recommend anything that uh, I feel you shouldn't buy. And the smoke machines at the bottom, although 
I fixed it and we had to modify it. But I love that smoke machine. I I don't want to live without it. Uh, you could put it in my grave. I'm just kidding. Anyways, uh, so it's Christmas Eve and I'm going to try to get this video done. And now it's just a little past 7 and uh, I just want to wish you guys all a Merry Christmas. And uh, some of you guys are having your Christmas tonight and some will have it tomorrow. But it's... I'm pretty happy, and I want all you guys to be happy, and I just want to thank everybody. Uh, I'm having a fun time, and I like showing people what I do, and that's how I fix cars, so it's pretty easy. I'm, I'm not that smart, so anybody can do it. All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, hey, buy one of these, these soldering irons. They don't cost very much, and uh, you can catch me next time. See you guys later.